Hey there, Wargamers, Justin the Arm Painter, and today, boom, we've got another unboxing video. So as we get into today's unboxing, I do want to give a quick shout out here. Uh, first and foremost, big thank you to uh, Dave Alsager, Sager, Alsager, um, Gold Bishop from the uh, the Death Ray Designs Discord. He saw me put out a kind of a call to action, a request. Uh, I already have a copy of this. Actually, I've gotten multiple copies that have been painted and rolled into different forces. But with the max uh, mass exodus rather of Games Workshop, um, you know, games, uh, game players, fan base and stuff uh, that have come over to uh, Battletech. I wanted to do a proper kind of my version of rambling and unboxing this box in hopes that maybe they will stumble across this and maybe get some good information. Um, my hope is to eventually do some videos um, where we talk about how to approach getting into Battletech. I'll briefly mention when we get to that um, kind of approaching classic, but that'll be really small because I don't know much about it. I know some of what you would need, but I know a lot more about Alpha Strike, uh, so I'm kind of approaching it from that perspective. I also feel like that's the easiest game mode to get into, and the more content we can push out that's going to help people get into uh, uh, Alpha Strike, the more people are going to get into Battletech and retain. Uh, I, I like classic, I like the concepts, the little bit I've played is really fun. But it's a little crunchy, let's be honest. If you if you were watching this and you play Classic, you know it takes a while and there's a lot of minutia to the rules. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for a casual pickup game, or if you want to walk into a game shop and be like, hey, you want to throw some dice and blow up some stompy robots, Alpha Strike's really easy. So this box was donated by uh, Dave Alsagar, Gold Bishop from the DRD um, Discord, or, uh, the, the company I work for. Uh, and he donated this to the stream under two conditions. Uh, the first one is that I give a shout out to his buddy. Uh, and the second one is to the gaming community they're part of. Uh, and, and I'll explain a little bit of that in a moment. So um, um, let's preface this by saying, get your tissues maybe, uh, if you're a little sensitive. Uh, but he wanted me to give a shout out uh, to his buddy, Benjamin Starkley, if I said it right. And they are from the Northwest Indiana gaming community. Now, uh, the reason he wanted me to give this shout out is this actually belonged to his friend who is no longer with us and he wanted to um, initially use this, if I recall, along with the beginner box that he sent me to, um, to help grow Battletech in his area and then COVID happened. So his buddy passed away uh, and this stuff was not able to be used for what he wanted to use it for and he sent it to me uh, under the, the hopes that I would be able to use it uh, to reach more audience, even just one person, to get into Battletech and also do something to honor his friend's memory. So a big thank you for that. And uh, hopefully this pays a little bit of homage, um, if I said that right, uh, to your buddy. And uh, we'll get into some of what I want to do with this later uh, to pay some more homage uh, uh, to his, his friend as well. Um, but suffice to say, we're going to get into the unboxing of this today. And throughout this video, I will talk about what I want to do with it, the contents. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy listening to me ramble. So that being said, let's go ahead and pop this box. You can tell the, uh, the wrapping's already off, but everything's here. So whew, and uh, if you watched my previous video, um, I talked a little bit about the, the box here. Um, I always save these. I don't chuck them unless you got a whole bunch of them. The thing that's really nice with these is it's a nice thick cardboard. If you're playing this as like, approaching this as like a board game, uh, you can uh, store it as such back and forth. It's pretty, you know, dur or durable. Um, these edges can tear. Uh, but the thing I like to do with it is to store minis in it. So when you're working on models and you're going from like room to room and you're painting you just throw your minis in this and you just pick it up and you walk around so it's a nice staging post for moving stuff around i know that seems like a weird thing but i can never have enough of these and it seems like every time i turn around i'm working on a project and i need one so um if you're looking to get the uh, game armor combat uh, box i believe this retails for 60 uh, msrp usually you can find it online for 45 or 50 bucks give or take uh, depending on where you can find it slight caveat to that however is as of filming this there's a big shortage right now these are sold out a variety of things have happened that have made this an issue so first and foremost covid supply supply chain issues was a problem then the mass exodus from uh, the games workshop fan base jump and ship which made the demand go up for this and they sold out really quickly uh, and then the kind of uh, resurgence or renaissance if you will of Battletech happening a lot of people are just getting into it even veterans that may have been on the fence they've now seen the quality of the plastics and they've jumped over and decided to invest and this is a really good value even at the $60 mark uh, at full retail this is a really good value so as we open up the box here uh, just like with the clan invasion box um, 
we've got uh, similar content, similar um, um, inserts and so forth. Uh, but first and foremost, at face value, uh, you'll notice you get a little bit more. In the clan invasion box, you got five mechs or a star, which makes sense, and two elementals. As I mentioned in that video, I do wish we had gotten five elementals. So you got a star of mechs and a star of elementals. That made sense. Getting two elementals was a little silly. And the only way to fill out that um, the two you had to make a star was to order some crazy number of boxes otherwise if you got the elemental star box uh that i think they had five in it now you'd have seven if you paired that with your your actual starter box type thing or box game set uh so that was a little weird in this case though they do a lot better so you get eight mechs which is really awesome and you get two lights you get two mediums you get two heavies and two assaults uh, that's really good because you can make two lances with this so if it's just for you and you're playing with a buddy and he has his own you got two lances if your buddy doesn't and you guys are splitting it or you're just playing as like a board game to just try it out you each get a lance and it can be even because you can split the weight classes so one light for each one medium for each one heavy for each and one assault before we get into the mechs though um, just like with the clan invasion box for the inserts, we got a little primer here with some uh, little stories and stuff. If you want to learn just a little bit about the fluff, this will kind of give you a, a little uh, snippet from a story. Got our dice, which, uh, if I'm honest, if you're getting into uh, Alpha Strike, this is fine, but um, you're going to want more D6. I'm sure if you're watching, you should probably have a bunch, um, but I recommend investing in a bunch of pairs of. Um, different color dice um you could play alpha strike with three different uh, roll uh types one or one set of d6 and that's fine um that's a little fast and it's it's pretty brutal if you if you hit it's pretty much all damage or no damage and there's two other ways for rolling dice for damage um one that uses an off color die and then a whole bunch of solid color um and there's one that's each point of damage you do is a, a pair of colored dice so that you can roll and know how much hits that's the one most people do is the third option there and one of the options that i've gone with uh for the the funsies is i've picked up some double d6s um so these are 12 siders but it's got two of every facing so the statistics are the same but you get more um consistently average dice rolls whereas some of these have poor weight distribution because they're not you know they're definitely not uh, Las Vegas cut neither are these but these are a bit more consistent than standard d6 so I really like these um, that's just an option for you if you happen to pick those up now we've also got our cards here which we'll get into in a moment uh, I'll save the mix for last so if you're not interested in all the contents here feel free to skip ahead I will go ahead and pop this open move it out of the way first and get into the contents here so just like with a clan invasion box you get this nice uh, thick cardboard uh, I feel like it's pretty durable you could bend it but pretty durable could laminate it if you really want to go above and beyond um, this is super helpful if you play classic battle tech uh, it's your little cheat sheet and uh, boy is it a cheat sheet there's a lot of information on here uh, when I mentioned at the beginning of the video how uh, classic is a little crunchy compared to Alfstrike being um, a uh, more streamlined and fast-paced game, this is why. Um, this is more of a simulation, whereas Alpha Strike's more of a traditional uh, tabletop war game. It just depends on what you're into uh, and what your time investment is. I think there are benefits to both. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, this one I attribute to more like D&D uh, roleplay style, not necessarily roleplaying, but like when you have a character who wants to do things and you're controlling a mech or a lance, or if you and your buddies are all playing and each one of you controls like a mech and then like someone else is um, controlling the op, uh, op for so that uh, each one of you is playing together against uh, a GM, so to speak, it feels more thematic and fun and these rules facilitate that pretty well. So when you take damage and crits, you feel it. Whereas um, if you're having to do all that, that minutia and, and damage uh, tracking on all those yourself, it doesn't, it loses a little bit for me personally, not everyone's going to agree and that's fine. But yeah, if you get this, save it, uh, take care of it. Cause that's a, that's a really valuable resource. Uh, you get these nice cardboard standees so one of the things you could do with Battletech is you can use uh, proxies. Uh, now, if you go to events, they may require painted minis, official minis or otherwise, um, and that's fine. It's their prerogative to do so. And if I'm honest, I think the uh, uh, printed, or not printed, uh, uh, the physical representations are better than these punch outs. But for someone who's getting into the game and wants to learn or wants to expand and is on a budget, there's nothing wrong with using these to start. Um, 
the box comes with uh, eight mechs, and uh, you are getting um, nine standees, which uh, the Griffin's pretty funny because it doesn't come in the box. They were cheeky, cheeky little catalyst peeps putting it in there. Uh, but if you and your opponent, uh, like you just can't agree, like one of you wants to use the awesome and the other one wants to use the awesome, rock, paper, scissors, you'll roll off and one of you gets to the standee and one gets to use the mini, uh, something like that. Or if you're doing classic and you're each controlling a couple of mechs and you're going up against the out four, perhaps the out four gets the standees because uh, these kind of suck compared to the plastic so make them your NPCs that you're blasting holes in you know um, but that's nice so that if you only wanted to invest the $60 and maybe you're a parent you want to get your kids into the game maybe you're on a budget maybe you want to introduce your uh, local hobby shop to the game um, you've got standees that will represent the mechs for you uh, especially for alpha strike you can find the rules uh, um, the stat cards and stuff on their official uh, website masterunitlist.info I think um, if someone needs to know where it is, if I forget, um, uh, ping me in the comments. I'll drop it there. I'll, I'll try and remember to put it in the description. But you get to get all the Alpha Strike cards at Master Unit List. Um, but yeah, uh, this is really good for that, and you can get people into it, and you can minimize how much you got to spend. And that, I can't uh, emphasize enough how cool this is if you're on a budget and if you don't want to approach it as a traditional war game. Maybe you only want to get the box games and be done, and you could literally get Alpha or not Alpha Strike, get a Game of Armor Combat, get Clan Invasion, get Beginner Box, and that would give you. Uh, let's see, eight, two come in the beginner box, so 10, five uh, clan mechs come in the clan box, so 15, and two elementals, so 17 models to play with, and you'd be in the game, or you'd be out um, less than, I think, $150 for that, so uh, compared to 40k, uh, that's still not even approaching their, their two-player starter boxes, if I'm honest, so, uh, and if you only wanted to do just this box, this is the way to go, this is the one, the beginner box is great if you want to learn, uh, I'm digressing a little bit here, but it, it only comes with two mechs, and it's about $20, this is 60 uh, and it comes with four times as many mechs. Uh, you get eight versus the two. So, um, you know, kind of it depends on your investment level. Now, the other box does come with a Griffin, which is nice, and this one doesn't. Uh, that's how they get you. They want you to buy that box. Um, but yeah, it's very affordable, and you could approach this board game if you wanted to. Uh, so, we've got the standees. Oh, I forgot. Um, if you're playing with the traditional uh, paper hex mats, which I play with the neoprene uh, rollout mats and physical terrain, but if you're using this, they give you these um, cardboard punch outs to. Uh, change your train a little bit if you want to spice it up. Um, as I talked about in the Clan Invasion box um, review, this is a little hard for me, uh, abstract wise, in particular the, the hills. It's sometimes going to be really difficult, like knowing this is level one to level two, and then your paper mat's level zero. So, like, this is actually going up and then up again. That's a little difficult, I understand. Um, but it's it's just hard to see because it's all flat, um, which is why I think that the smaller mats for classic and very low model count works for me personally. This is just me. Uh, some of the comments could disagree, and that's cool. Um, but if you're doing like company on company and you're going to play all weekend, heaven forbid, <laughs> it would take me a week probably because I'm just really slow when I play classic. Um, but if that's what you're doing and you've got a big, large mat, it's really easy to, to miss some of this stuff on there. And that's what I ran into. I was trying to play with some friends when I was learning, um, which I'm still learning because I'm a noob with classic. I don't play it often, but... Um, we were trying to shoot and then we're like, oh crap, I thought this was all level one. And then also there's level three in the middle. It's like a pillar you didn't see or something like that. It's really abstract and sometimes difficult. So sometimes we had to just be like, okay, pretend it's not there. We've been playing like it isn't there. It's not there now. We've been shooting each other for three turns and now we noticed, you know. The water though is easy for me to uh, to, to see because typically when you play war games, water's flat and you just know if you're standing on it, you're in water. You don't need to see the downward depth um, which this does have, and you'd have to know that. Um, it's the uh, verticality that's a problem for me, not not negative, but positive, uh, going up and down. So, um, but it is nice that these are included, and if you're into classic, it's a nice resource to have because sometimes sourcing these um, little hex map pack modifications and stuff, those boxes often sell out and they're hard to get. You don't get a lot in here, but it's nice to have a variety. And if you get um, a couple of the box sets, you'll have a nice little collection of these to mod out your mats. So uh, I'm going to zoom my camera out here, and I apologize for my uh, my poo poo desk, um, but we've got a couple of mats. I'll fold these out for you, and I play Alpha Strike when I play on uh, four x four. So these are pretty small mats. Um, I really like this one. I like those colors. I think that's going to contrast well with mechs, and in whatever table you put it on, it's probably going to contrast pretty well against the table. So that'd be nice. Um, the one thing to remember with these is they are basically thin paper. Um, they are nice, but uh, 
don't set your soda cans on it. Lord, please don't do that. Um, you get that condensation ring and you might mess them up or you might spill your soda. So be particularly careful. They are matte. It's a nice matte finish. But if you had access to um, or the ability to laminate them and then maybe roll them or store them flat, you would have a shine at that point, but then they're protected and you don't have to worry about messing them up. So that's an option. Um, and if you laminated them, you could also use a dry erase on there to make notations of where things are or reminders, things like that. So um, that's a little bit more tedious, but that is an option of something you could do. And if I recall, um, the maps that come in these boxes are exclusive. So if you get the clan box, the beginner box, and the game of armor combat, um, then you get uh, a variety of maps or maps to play on or put together. Here's the other one. Uh, and here's where it gets, you know, some of the abstractness of classics. Like, that's a road and a mech. Um, let me grab one here. Let's get one of the new ones. Now, this is an assault mech. Uh, this is the Dire Wolf. Um, and it takes up both, you know, both lanes there. And I get that's a little abstract, but even the terrain that's sometimes printed on these is very, very small. I mean, that's a bridge that cars and tanks would go across and you know, he takes up the whole thing. Uh, and then in the same uh, same note, we've got a car knob here. This is official model. Uh, and that thing takes up a lot of space too. Um, I prefer the stuff where the terrain's a little bit more uh, to scale with the mechs. Personally, I like some people uh, don't and that's okay. Um, but I, I think that's a little bit more visually pleasing and, and gets me um, more invested in the game. And then we've got the backside of the map here as well. So um, one of the things to note is that you can also, and this may seem obvious, but for some people, perhaps not, you can also notch this together. Now I don't have a lot of room here at my desk, um, but if you were to lay these out, you can continue the hexes like so, right? Now you might not line it up there because of the road, but you might line it up at the top or the bottom, you know, or flip it like this. You know, you might have that Battletech, you know, logo in the way, but you could double up the mats. And from what I have read, there are things that have to do with like artillery that reference um, maps as a unit of measurement, like one map, two map away, something like that. That's where these come into play. Whereas with Alpha Strike, you don't use it this way um, or don't have that. You don't have the mats of that, that um, as that unit of measure. And I, I know there's conversion rules for using hexes and stuff for uh, Alpha Strike, but uh, it's not something I've personally done. Um, so we've also got, uh, moving on, our, uh, our unit sheets. And just like with the uh, Clan Invasion unboxing review, uh, this is a really nice resource. This is something that uh, there are sources online to get this type of stuff. I know that there's uh, Mega Mech and I think it's Solaris Skunk Works or something like that. Um, but I don't know of official and those may be. So if you know more classics, sound off in the comments below. Um, I highly recommend not going to some like illegal PDF site or something, um, some Russian, you know, Dropbox basically. That, that's a, you know, that's a whole nother can of worms. Um, Whereas with uh, Alpha Strike, the cards are available official on uh, their master unit list. Uh, these tech sheets are generally things that are behind a paywall. And like I said, there are some options that are a bit more on the up and up. Uh, and I'm sure someone in the comments below will, will mention that. But I think Mega Mech and the Skunk Works are the two things that are particularly popular. Um, but that being said, because this is something that uh, is not always easily replaceable, especially if you don't know where to look or don't know who to ask about um, the sources for it, um, if you're going to play classic and use this, laminate them or scan them and print a copy. These are your masters. Don't mark on them and mess them up because you they might, it could be potentially based on your resources, maybe irreplaceable. So you get a variety of stat sheets in here. Now this is all classic. Um, you know, so you've got your armor and then your structure. This is basically your armor HP and then your internal HP. And if you take internal hits, then you go to the, um, the crit table and start rolling to see if there's damage to your internals. Whereas with Alpha Strike, it's a bit uh, a bit more simplified where you've got um, your top set of pips here is going to be your armor and the red ones are your structure. And if you start taking damage in the structure, then you would roll for criticals, um, but that's it. It's pretty simple. You don't have to worry about locations. It's very simplified. Uh, also don't have to worry about weapon locations or any of that. Like, this is very, very streamlined and for someone who's got, when they sit down to game, has between one and three hours to play, whereas Classic is usually your, your evening um, or all day kind of game session. So we've got our uh, little uh, sheets here. And then we've got the rule book. Now, if I recall, this is, ooh, that's actually pretty nice. I feel like that was this is a nicer stock than the, uh, the Clan Invasion one. It's almost like a little, little tiny book. It's got like a little spine and everything. Uh, it's not like that one that's just kind of like a fold over with staples. This is actually pretty, pretty legit. Um, 
but I, I believe the contents here are essentially the same or close to the same as the um, um, Clan Invasion one, so it's going to be going over a lot of classic uh, setups. And as I was mentioning before, they even mentioned it in the book here, uh, lining up two maps. So it says, scenario, actually it's three, scenario three map layout, so you need an extra map. They sell map packs and stuff too. Um, so yeah, um, if you are going to get into classic, this is uh, going to be very useful for you. If you're going to get into Alpha Strike, um, this stuff's not going to be as useful for you. Um, you're going to be more interested in the um, Game of Armor Combat, or not Game of Armor Combat, sorry, Alpha Strike Commander's Edition <laughs> rulebook. But if you get into Classic, this has got you covered. That will, uh, uh, or at least have the basics. Uh, there are some expansions you might do. Uh, after this, you might get the Battle Mech Manual, and you might get Total War. Battle Mech Manual is going to be more for just mech combat, and then Total War is going to bring in uh, more of the advanced rules for using uh, combined arms, infantry, tanks, VTOLs, things like that in conjunction with your mechs. But you don't have to get those if you're just playing some real casual games at home. This in conjunction with this and one of your, your mats and uh, our maps and of course your minis, that's got you covered. You could play some classic with this. Um, kind of some beer and pretzels with your buddies or maybe your children if you're trying to get them uh, into wargaming. And then we've got a little primer here, much like um, the uh, literature that we had there. Um, this is going to give you a little bit of backstory on um, uh, some of the, the houses and stuff. I think this is going to mirror the clan invasion one where it goes over the, uh, the clans. This one's probably going to go over the houses. So we've got the different eras, gives you a quick little paragraph to describe what's going on there and the dates, which is important for, for Battletech. Uh, for anyone watching this, if you're new, one of the things that's very cool about Battletech, if you're coming from 40K, you can draw comparisons. So you have 40K, um, Warmer 40K is the future, Horse Heresy, Warmer 30K, you know, past, future or past, present. Uh, and Battletech, you've got a bunch of different eras to play in, and there are some mechs that are exclusive to each era, uh, and they don't always travel up the line. They definitely don't travel backwards, so mechs that are Dark Age specific don't go backwards because uh, they weren't invented yet. But there are mechs from the Star League era that you could buy and paint, or may even come in this box, that still exist into the Dark Ages. So whatever you buy to play here crosses all these. Uh, if you're getting into the game um, and you happen to be picking models that look cool, uh, be aware of what era they're useful in. There's a few mechs I've bought on the cool factor. And then, you know, if you're playing some beer and pretzels with your friends, they're probably not going to care when the eras are. You know, if you really want to use this cool model, um, you know, probably let you use it, whatever, um, in, a, in a casual setting. If you're doing like a campaign that is era specific, no. Uh, but I've got a few mechs that are like, I'm pretty sure like Jihad era and they don't exist, exist outside of that. You could make an argument, maybe going into the Dark Age, that they were found in some cache somewhere or someone salvaged them and fixed it. Um, you could try and justify that. Uh, but there's some mechs that are pretty specific to that era and it's hard to justify pulling them out. So be aware of that. But your basic stuff, uh, if, you've, if you've seen it in the Star League, a huge amount of it's going to come here. And if you've seen it in a video game, it's probably starting somewhere in the, around the clan invasion era and most of the clan stuff, it goes up. You can use it almost the whole time and you're, you're generally, it's a fair bet. So, um, got your little map here talking about, um, who controls what, and then, uh, a little primer on the star league, which is kind of what kicks off battle tech. Um, you know, the, the original, uh, mech bros, mech army, so to speak, kind of defenders of Terra, uh, and then your houses. I'm working on a Dark Age era Davian right now, which is Swordsworn. I've got um, Dark Age era Kurita uh, for me, which is um, uh, Dragon's Fury. Uh, and each one's kind of unique. So um, like this one in particular, I really like it because I always appreciated the like Japanese samurai kind of vibe. I really like that. Um, but yeah, if you're getting into the game, um, picking a house you like is particularly cool. And you can you can uh, theme your, your models around it. And now... Um, um, Dave, the guy who donated the box to me, his, uh, his buddy here, uh, Benjamin Starkley, uh, I was uh, informed that he played Free Worlds League, so House Merrick, and this is the faction, or the house he would have uh, uh, favored. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more here shortly, uh, but yeah. Uh, and then for me, I'm a big fan of Mercs, because kind of you kind of can do a lot of stuff. You get access to a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, um, that's cool. If you just want to get a little bit of backstory, TLDR type information in there, uh, obviously got your core rule book or, or basic rules as it were to get going got your two maps you got your uh, record sheets you got your punch outs got your cheat sheet and now we're into the mechs here 
get our dice back in, and we've got our cards. So let's go ahead and get these uh, popped open here. And you're gonna get a, a collection of pilots and mechs, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna start with the Locust here, and uh, we're gonna be uh, reviewing that one. So let's grab the pilot card, and some of these uh, have different pilots on each side, so we have to find out which one's got the, the Locust. It's also funny because they give you that Griffin, but not the model. All right, so Locust is double-sided with a Locust on each side. And as we, uh, as we get going into this, I'll zoom in here. We'll check, we're going to be checking out some mechs, so uh, a close-up's probably going to be appreciated. Um, one of the things I want to do with these, um, as per uh, uh, Dave uh, donating it and basically saying when I was done with the review, that I could do whatever with the minis. Uh, ideally something to get new people into the game. So um, what I want to do is make this my travel demo box for my local shop to get new people in. I always have it with me if I go, so if someone's new I can you know whip it out and we can, we can throw down some dice and I can teach them the game. Uh, so what I want to do is work with Dave to figure out um, one light, one medium, um, one heavy, and one assault that would be Free World's League or House Merrick. Uh, what for would his buddy Starkly, Benjamin Starkly, what would he have liked? And in honor of him, when I paint this box, I'll paint a lance as Free World's League and uh, maybe paint the other lance as something else, or maybe what Dave himself might have uh, saw facing off against him, depending on complexity of paint scheme, as uh, certain things will just take forever. I want to be able to get these to a good standard quickly uh, so I can start teaching people. So I think that'll be cool. And um, in honor of his buddy, no matter what, if these are being used, he's kind of living on uh, vicariously uh, or posthumously, I don't know what the word would be, but he's kind of living on through us and, and helping bring some joy to. Uh, potential Battletech fans. So that is my goal. Uh, so to get started here, um, let's go ahead and check out the pilot card. If you are interested in the stat or the, the flavor text, pause the uh, the video and you can read that. Uh, but we've got uh, Chu E from House Karita or Chu I. This is, uh, oh, sorry, that's the rank. Uh, Luna Tekinaka. And then we've got Kim Yarrow, Mech Warrior Mercenary. Guy love the Mercs. And then we've got the uh, um, Alpha Strike card here. This is the Locust 1V and the 1E. E. This one's coming at 18 points, 16 move, three uh, target movement modifier, which is nice. Uh, damage output's not super good, uh, but it is a light, so you're looking at ones and twos most of the time. Uh, life is four, it's okay. Uh, the big deal here is he's cheap. He's very cheap to field, uh, and his TMM three. Uh, keeping him moving, keeping those feet running and making him hard to hit is really good. So if you're new, the, the three modifiers, the penalty your opponent uh, takes when they roll to try and hit him, and a three is very high. Um, you'll see as we move on that uh, you know, that's a, a pretty high number. For one point more, we're going into the 1E variant. Uh, he's got two damage at short, one damage at medium, same TMM and movement, same life, and the special energy ability. For one point more, this guy's got one higher damage at short, which is very useful, and the energy ability. Energy means that uh, if he was to suffer an ammo explosion uh, critical effect, he ignores it because he doesn't have ammo. Whereas this guy, if he gets hit and takes an ammo critical, he would explode because he, he technically has ammo somewhere in his, his, uh, his mech. That's not as big of a deal as one might think with the lights, because if you're taking structure damage and rolling crits, um, by the time you hit structure, you're 75% dead anyway. So if you get the crit, it does suck, but like you're probably going down to begin with. So, um, but for one point more, he is much more efficient. Um, and the uh, the idea here when you're playing with the lights, uh, especially with that range one, is to get up on the rear and uh, start shooting somebody from behind and you get plus one to your damage output. So he goes from um, the uh, 1V variant to the 1E, which doubles his short range damage basically from a one to a two and then you get on the rear, goes up to a three. So it's it's pretty uh, pretty efficient uh, and that's what he does. Go up there, be annoying, be a, a locust, a swarm of locust. So let's go ahead and uh, get out up tight on this mini here. Check him out. I'm a big fan of the Locust. When I first started, um, I did not invest enough in picking up lights, and I find I don't have enough to round up my forces. I have a lot of heavies and mediums because that's the stuff I favor. But don't don't underestimate lights. I know that uh, as Fritz, uh, um, a Wargamer Fritz from YouTube would say, big guns never tire. He likes the big guns, but uh, I think he knows uh, if you want those big guns to never tire, you got to have lights to harass and do the work or some tanks and stuff to get in their face. So from this box, this Locust, 
is one of the best mechs in here. It's cheap, it's annoying, and uh, I think most people can find a reason to put one in a lance if they're playing with Inner Sphere, especially with this stuff. Very good. So up next, we're gonna be going into the Commando. So we got his card. Let's uh, fish out his pilot card here. All right, here we go. So we've got Faye Fetters, Mech Warrior Mercenary. And uh, Burkhart Gans from House Steiner. And this one's a little bit cheaper than that Locust. 17 points for the 2D variant, but you'll notice his TMM is lower and his movement slower. That Locust moved 16 and had one higher TMM. This guy uh, is a little easier to hit, moves slower, but he has higher damage. Uh, he has SRM's one, SRM 1, so he could use the SRM special ability with special ammo, and he's got the same life as the Locust coming with four pips. And then for the same amount of damn or same points here, we've got the 3A variant, which looks identical. They're both considered strikers and they have the same stats. So sometimes you get that where you have a card that's identical. So uh, this is the Commando Mini here. And again, like if you're looking at these, we have eight mechs in here, a full retail, that's uh, 60 bucks for the box. That's less than $10 a mini. Um, Let's see what, uh, I guess $6 a mini would be 48, you know? So uh, seven bucks a mini would be what, 56-ish? So like 750 or 725, whatever. But less than $8 a mech uh, is what you're paying if you're not including any of the contents. That's not bad considering your medals are usually 10 bucks or more. Um, and if you're getting this uh, at a discount for miniature market or Ares miniatures and games um, uh, or fortress minis, stuff like that, like you can get a discount, so. Uh, sometimes you get some mold lines and stuff on them. It's not too bad. I find it to be uh, Some mechs are a little worse than others, but I don't find it too off-putting because the price point it's really affordable and I really don't mind but there is our commando and Next up, let's get into our mediums here and we're gonna talk about the Griffin first because uh, not Griffin. Sorry the uh, um, uh, Man, I'm just I'm drawing a blank here uh, the Wolverine derp actually the Wolverine I think is a heavy sorry no, sorry, the Wolverine is a medium. Derp, they, they threw this Griffin card in and you don't get a Griffin. Um, so it was throwing me off. All right, so for our Wolverine here, we've got Atten Zerak Karveski. House Merrick. Shwoop. And we've got Delmar Clay, Mercenaries, Grey Death Legion. And for the card here, you'll notice the points go up. He's 32. Now this is a card, uh, not all the new Alpha Strike cards do this, um, but he's got a 10 movement with J, which is jump, and a team of two slash three. It's telling you um, when you see that, that the two is when he does a normal move, the three is if he jumps, and you take some other penalties, but it lets you know to remember that if he jumps, you get a, a bonus to his team in. Um, so 32 points, two medium, or two short, two medium, overheat value of one, so you can pump that up to a three um, at short medium range, and he's got uh, 11 life, which is not too shabby, and that's the 6M variant. For two points less, you got the 6R variant. Same stats at the top, same damage, no overheat, but he trades the overheat value for a plus one uh, damage um, at long range, which this guy does not have. And he uh, gives up one point of armor at the uh, expense or at the uh, decrease of two points of life. So um, I typically would go with life over non-life if I can. And in this case, that overheat's gonna be a lot more useful than this guy here. Uh, you're, you're typically gonna be fighting at medium range, so the overheat's gonna be more helpful than the, the one long range shot, which he's probably not gonna be hitting anyway. So uh, between those two variants, if you got the points, I like that one. And uh, this is probably my least favorite mech in the box. I'm just not a big fan of the pose. Uh, I know it's based off of, uh, I think, one of the old um, um, source books. I feel like I've seen it in that one. I think he's getting blasted and has bullet holes and like pop marks and, and hot metal, metal on him. Um, I just, it's not my favorite. It's kind of odd. Um, least favorite one of the box. I think I like all the other ones pretty well, but Wolverine, not mine. My favorite. But someone else may differ. Stat wise, it's pretty good. It's more the sculpt. It's just not my favorite one. So. Getting into the next medium here, which I do like, and we're gonna talk about the Shadow Hawk. I'll grab his card here. And another one of the Grey Death Legion minis. Um, oh, sorry, guess he's not a Grey Death Legion. I just saw the last name, Carlisle. Durant Carlisle, Mercenary. And we're looking at the Shadow Hawk here. We have 
Audrey Saltet. Mercenary as well. And for the stat card here, a little cheaper than the uh, Wolverine. Uh, this card's also different than some of the newer printed ones. Um, it's got Team M22 listed, even though it has jump. So it's got standard move of 10, jump of 6. It's got 22 listed um, because it's got weak jump jets. Uh, he does not get the TMM bonus for jumping. Uh, the newer prints will say um, uh, JMPW or something for weak jump jet, so don't like that. Um, he doesn't. The newer ones also, he's got indirect fire uh, zero with an asterisk here. New cards don't tell you what that means. Um, you have to look up in the book, but this one does have it printed, which I think is uh, a good thing. I think it was a mistake not having it for new people. Having to go find where that is in the book is a little hard uh, to to um, sift through, but uh, knowing here that basically like when you roll a hit, there's a 50-50 chance you will do uh, damage or no damage. Um, so he's got two medium, two short, one long, and he's got 10 life. Not bad, Not that's it's not bad. That's a pretty good mech. You can't go wrong with Shadowhawk in my opinion. And for the um, Durant Carlisle version, it's 12 points more. He's got the same life, same TMM and so forth, but this one's a skill too. This one has no skill listed, which is assumed, uh, if there's no skill listed, it's assumed to be pilot or gunnery skill four at 30 points. This one's the character version. He is assumed to be a skill two. He's 12 points more, same life. And he's got two, two, one for his damage, so same damage. He's got a special ability. You'd have to look up in the book to know what combat intuition does. Indirect fire, which it tells you, and then lucky. I believe lucky one means he gets to reroll um, like one dice a game or makes his opponent reroll or something like that. Again, um, those will be listed in the, uh, the Alpha Strike um, Commander's Edition book. Whoops. So let's check out the model here. If you're into like anime mecha, this has got a real anime kind of vibe. I just, I love everything about this and the Griffin. The Griffin's not in this box, but I love both of them. Um, they're just super cool mechs, great artwork all over the place. My only complaint with this model, if you get it, is the gun can be a little droopy, which with a hair dryer, a heat gun, if you're careful, be careful because you'll melt these if you're not, uh, or a little bit of hot water. Uh, hot water is the least aggressive there, but a, a, a hair dryer with a little bit of time can do it too. Um, you can get that bent back in place. Sometimes they're more egregious than others. Um, it's also a little fragile, and if you don't heat it, it'll start to like snap right here. It's a little ring. That's the weak point, and that'll, uh, that'll break right there. But I'm a big fan of that Shadow Hawk. Super cool model. I fit that into a lot of lists. I've got quite a few Shadow Hawks uh, mixed into all of my forces. So next up, we're going to get into the heavies. And we're going to go with uh, an iconic mech from the Battletech universe, and we're going to check out the Catapult. Um, now, if you've played, if you've seen anything from Mech Warrior or Battletech, you've probably seen a Catapult before. So we got Pierce uh, Ballantyne from House Liao. We've got Jenna Campbell, Mercenaries, First Kearney Highlanders, Northwind Highlanders. So um, that's a, a, a known established Merc company. These are all things in the fluff, but like this is this is a character that people know from a company people definitely know. It's not, not obscure. The Northwind Highlanders is a big deal. <laughs> um, Stat-wise here, coming in uh, not much more than that Shadowhawk was. For the C1 variant, Team M1. Now you see points are similar, but it's, it's uh, Team M's going down. Eight jump, and it's got a two, so one, two, lets you know if you jump, again, you get that bonus. Higher damage than the other mechs we've looked at, two, three, two, medium range, we're gonna be firing the most. It's got 10 life, indirect fire, and LRM, so he can occasionally indirect fire one, fire one damage over um, indirectly where he can't be seen and still hit targets if he's got a spotter. So the K2 variant, which is the same cost, he has one more life, three, three, two, no jump jets, team M1. I really like this because he's got higher damage across the board at all range bands, except for the, the, I guess not higher, but like he's got one at the short. But the big deal for me is he's got that one extra life and a big, it's a big, big, something that I, I find very helpful. Um, having extra armor is always good. Uh, you do sacrifice the jump jets, but um, I mean, the other one's got indirect fire, so he could, he could shoot even if he can't see as long as he's got a spider, spotter. So like the jump jets for this guy who doesn't have indirect fire would probably be a little bit more helpful. Um, but it kind of tweaks their own. Each one are the same cost, and you can make a case for either one, but uh, I really like that one. Indirect fire is not, uh, this one doesn't have a whole lot of points there, so it's not a lot of damage, and jump jets, it's it's basically, which, do you want to have jump jets so you have the ability for slightly more maneuverability, or you want to be a little bit tankier? So those are the things to consider. And here is the catapult. Now, sometimes you'll see um, 
the pods will be a little like, uh, this one's a little cocked again, or maybe this one's just cocked. A little bit of hot water, a heat gun, uh, or a hair dryer. Again, if you use the heat gun, be careful. Uh, or sometimes you have to cut stuff and reposition, but not too hard to fix. It's a pretty good model though. I really dig it. I like the scale. It's got a nice weight to it. And it's a, it's a pretty iconic mech for uh, Battletech. Like, people know that. You, you know what a catapult is if you've seen anything. And if you don't, now you do. Pew, pew, pew. This is the, the LRM long, long range missile boat. Now for our second heavy in this box, this is probably my favorite mech from the box here. One of my favorite mechs in general. We've got the Thunderbolt. And this sculpt here is super duper nice. Uh, we'll pull it up in just a moment. Um, but some of the old metal sculpts are just, they're terrible. Um, I mean, there's some people out there who are purists and they love all the old stuff, which is great. I've got some old mechs too, old Atlas, old Battlemaster. There's a certain nostalgia vibe, but I love this one. It's a chunky boy and I dig it. So for our pilot here, we got Simon Beckner from House of Merrick. Shwoop. We got uh, Lutgard Wintar, if I said it right, from House Steiner. Coming in a little bit uh, more expensive than that catapult at 36 points. No jump jets, Team M1, movement 8, 331 for damage. So a little bit more damage than the uh, catapult at the short range. Overheat value, which is nice. So you can be pumping out uh, standard overheat, so only at short and medium. So you can be popping out potentially four damage at the expense of heat. Two more life than the catapult had. Uh, or at least the one uh, one catapult, and then the other one had one more than that one. So, um, and then indirect fire one. Shoop. And this one coming in at one point less. This does have jump jets, so team M1, two. Um, three, three, one for damage, so that's the same. Indirect fire, same amount of life. So you're essentially uh, dropping your point level by one uh, in exchange for jump jets and no overheat. So you're going down from 36 to 35, no overheat, and you gain jump. So it's kind of circumstances. How do you want him to perform and what functionality do you want? For the model here, boom, T-Bolt. I love it. It's a it's a fun mech. It's really good and classic uh, for a heavy. Uh, uh, this guy's a heavy. He's tanky as all hell. Uh, I've got a pretty interesting story with him. Maybe I'll share sometime. But uh, um, he is absolutely brutal. You can't go wrong if you if you're not sure what mech to pick. Grab T-Bolt. Like it is, it's good. I also appreciate that it's got some nice asymmetry. You got that uh, cockpit off to his right, our left of the screen, and then the missile pod off to the left, our right of the screen. Got two fists, you got the little, uh, I think it's PPC that's mounted on his right arm, particle projector, projection cannon. So yeah, can't go wrong with a T-Bolt. I own, I think five or six of these. <laughs> They're super cool. And finally, uh, we're gonna get into the assaults here. Uh, we're gonna start with the Battlemaster. So we got Wade's, Wade Fitzmarin, House Davian. And then unfortunately, I, I think it's silly that in this box, we got Griffin cards for a mech that's not in the box, right? I would have preferred to have gotten, I didn't, you notice I didn't do two because the backside is the awesome, right? I would have preferred to have gotten an awesome uh, double-sided card for pilot and an awesome double-sided um, uh, unit card, as well as the same for the Battlemaster, and we didn't. Um, we just got one card, which makes it difficult if you want to share, you only have the one card. So that that is a, a kind of a, a negative thing for this box, in my opinion. Granted, you can print these off from Master Unit List, but if you are going to do a pickup game with someone at a shop, you don't have two cards for the assault, and I think that's a mistake. Uh, so coming in at 40 points here, uh, this guy's got, uh, what is that, 4, uh, 8, 14, 15 life, I think. Um, 1 TMM, 8 movement, 331 for damage, overheat value 1, rear 1-1, one, one, which means that at short and medium, he can shoot one of his shots backwards at, out of his rear arc, which is cool. Uh, and then for the other variant, at one point, let, oh, sorry, that's the awesome. He almost got, I caught myself because all these other variants we had too. Um, so that puts us into looking at the model here. Uh, now, he's got quite a bit of life and his damage output similar to uh, the Catapult and the uh, Thunderbolt, so not too bad. He's pretty tanky. This is a pretty balanced box. Uh, nothing in here is particularly bad. It's all pretty good. If you're playing straight out of here, there's different variants on master unit list you'll see, but if you're playing with just a buddy in here, it's gonna be a pretty balanced balanced game. I think the one thing that might tip it could be the Locust if you're on fire and your opponent just can't hit him. Um, I think he outperforms the Commando because um, the Commando is just that one team M's huge. So we got our Battlemaster here. 
Again, we got a little asymmetry with that uh, ostensibly that's uh, I think an SRM6 uh, off on the side. Kind of got the anime mecha vibe going where he's got a fist actually holding a gun. Pretty cool. Got a little bit of flash here, could be cleaned, not the end of the world, but nice mech. And if you're learning to paint, it's got a nice big cockpit here uh, that you can do some cool effects on uh, to paint. And finally, the last mech in the box, but definitely not least, we've got the awesome. So for the pilot card, we've got Salvomir, Cla Clad Cladivo from House Merrick. And for his unit card, coming in at one point less than the Battlemaster, he's slower. Uh, Team M1, movement 6, 3-3-3, three, 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 versus the Battlemaster being a 3-3-1. Three, three, that is particularly useful. You're not going to be hitting stuff at long range with most stuff, but he, sits, he can sit back and be a sniping assault. You could pump his uh, pilot skill to a, a higher level if you're playing with those rules um, and let him sit back. He also has the energy special ability, whereas this guy does not. So if he takes a uh, ammo critical, he blows up. If he takes an ammo crit, it's ignored because he doesn't have ammo. Uh, and this guy's coming in with 14 life. Um, whereas the Battlemaster, I believe, has uh, a little bit more. Is that 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15? Yeah, so he's got um, the Battlemaster has one pip more of structure. So very, very close. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with this variant of the Awesome. Threes across the board. It's very consistent. He's not going to be hitting super hard, um, but all things considered, he's not too much more expensive than the Catapult or the T-Bolt down here. And he's consistently rolling three damage a turn trying to hit stuff. So I definitely like him. I've got a couple of painted awesomes right now. And here is the model. It's got some nice areas here for catching dry brushes, which I like. This right here, this little circle is great for decals. It's um, Some of these you have to kind of, uh, they're abstract. You got to pick where you want it and you may not be sure, but this makes the choice easy. Just pop it in the circle. And then you got these nice deep recesses for catching a wash and you could do checker pattern. I love painting the checkers. So white and black alternating or whatever colors you want. It really breaks up the profile on the mech and looks nice. So I really like it. Uh, granted he rolls he's only doing three damage but he's got four guns um, but that's the big deal with him is if I recall in classic I think the variant that we're using has three PPCs uh, so if he loses his arms two of his PPCs are in his chest so um, if he loses more than um, um, more than one PPC he means he's lost a torso half and he's in really bad shape so it's nice having those torso guns if you're playing classic because he's pretty tanky and by the time they take those out he's probably about to drop anyway so very very cool mech um, but that's, uh, <laughs> that was abrupt. I just all of a sudden stop. Um, but that is our, uh, our unboxing guys. We've got, uh, all, all eight mechs, uh, retail coming in at about 60 bucks. Uh, big thank you to Dave again for sending this to me. We'll have some updates on the channel as I, I paint those guys. I'm gonna leave those cards out of the sleeves now because I'm not too worried about it. Again, my big complaints, we have the, uh, Griffin cards here. No Griffin, but those do come in the beginner box. I am going to do a separate unboxing video on this it'll probably be shorter than this one but i do want to have a, a separate uh, bit of content to talk about with that and this is the only way to get the griffin so be aware if you want it and um yeah so that being said i'd like to thank you guys for watching this video again big shout out to dave thank you again and uh thank you for uh seeing this box and i hope that uh, uh we do your friend justice your friend um uh, benjamin starkley here and uh your community the northwest indiana gaming community i hope that i do them justice by trying to use this to do some good in light of a uh a sad situation and hopefully um we can work together to figure out what lance we would uh, paint in honor of your buddy uh for uh free worlds league and then we'll work on the other lance and i'll try and paint those up have those in the box as always guys if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button subscribe to the channel and drop some comments down below if you enjoyed this as well consider checking out fortress miniatures and games for all your battle tech needs uh he's a local so supporting him helps support me in the sense that it gives me a cool place to do battle tech stuff and uh he helps support the channel so uh it's kind of a win-win if you see anything that i paint on the the videos here like this dire wolf pew, 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 who's painted up for Dragon's Fury, which uh, apparently there's a named guy driving around in a dire wolf. Uh, if you see any of the stuff like that on the YouTube videos that I painted, 
or my Instagram, 99.99% of the paints I'm using are from Monument Hobbies, uh, their Pro Acro line. There'll be a, uh, a link down below and a coupon code so that you, if you want to pick up some paints, you can save some money. And finally, if you don't know, I do work for Death Row Designs. Uh, if you're interested in picking up some terrain, some widgets, or maybe even some of our 6 to 10 mil minis, because we've got some cool combined arm tanks and stuff that are perfect for Battletech, kind of like uh, our little flyer here, which is supposed to be uh, something similar to this guy. Um, we got those and supporting uh, Death Row Designs helps support me because it helps keep me employed because I work there and that's my day job. So um, there'll be a link down below and a coupon. As always, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate you letting me into your lives, into your cell phones, into your computers, wherever it is that you're consuming this content. This is uh, as much about being a little bit of hobby therapy for me and connecting with you guys as it is about bringing new people into the fold and just sitting here rambling about things that make me happy and hopefully taking that this little bit of time out of your day brings a little bit of enjoyment to you as well. Thank you again for hanging out. As always, keep rolling those dice, keep painting those models, and I'm going to catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.